I usually try to be pretty casual about my love for mythology. I don't really care if people get Roman and Greek names mixed up, and I don't live under a delusion that Marvel will be faithful to Norse mythology, or that it would be a good thing if they were. But Lord have mercy if someone tells me that Oedipus is about him wanting to have sex with his mother. First, a quick rundown of the Oedipus myth, and then a look at its most famous version. King Laius is the king of Thebes, and things are going pretty well. The city is calm, and his wife Jocasta just had their first child. But it's Greek myth, so you know something's about to go wrong. An oracle tells Laius that his son is destined to kill him and wed Jocasta. So Laius decides a little bit of infanticide should solve the problem, and gives the baby to a shepherd, telling him to abandon the baby in the wilderness. The shepherd has mercy on the baby and gives him to another shepherd who gives him to the king and queen of the kingdom next door. They raise him and he grows up strong and healthy until he gets an oracle telling him that he will kill his father and wed his mother. This baby and now young man is Oedipus. So Oedipus, scared that he will fulfill this prophecy, runs away and ends up in Thebes. This is why you should tell your children if they're adopted. While traveling to Thebes, Oedipus comes across an old man. They get in a bit of a scuffle and he ends up killing him. When he gets to Thebes, he faces off against a sphinx who is terrorizing the city. He defeats it by answering its riddle and is crowned King of Thebes because old King Laius hasn't shown up in a while. He marries Jocasta and they have a couple kids. A little while later, the city of Thebes is being terrorized by a plague because the murderer of King Laius was never caught. So Oedipus goes out to find the murderer, but in doing so, he quickly realizes that the person he murdered oh so long ago, before he even reached the city, was old King Laius, which means that Queen Jocasta is his wife, and that he fulfilled the prophecy he really, really did not want to fulfill. He ends up leaving the throne to his brother Creon after Jocasta has killed herself and he has blinded himself. Greek myth, always the worst possible options went out. The most popular version of this myth is Sophocles' play, Oedipus the King. This follows his investigation to find the murderer and ends right after he blinds himself. Let's read a few passages, shall we? But whether a mere man can know the truth, whether a seer can fathom more than I, there is no test, no certain proof. There was a riddle, not for some passerby to solve. It cried out for a prophet. Where were you? Did you rise to the crisis? Not a word. You and your birds, your gods, nothing. No, but I came by, Oedipus the ignorant. I stopped the Sphinx, with no help from the birds. My own intelligence hit the mark. It's all chance. Chance rules our lives. Not a man on earth can see a day ahead. And of course, throw in a typical lack of piety. You pray to gods? Let me grant your prayers. And finally, what might be the most important line in the play, delivered offhandedly by Creon, I don't know, and when I don't know, I keep quiet. To me, the theme of the play is pretty clear. Sophocles is examining man's relationship with knowledge and fate, how having too much knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and its arrogance to try to avert one's own fate. The popular idea that this story is about Oedipus wanting to kill his father and wanting to have sex with his mother is easily disproven by the story itself. Everything Oedipus does leading up to the play is motivated by him trying to avoid his fate. And of course, this avoidance of fate is what leads to him fulfilling his fate. And also, he has this whole complex about how wise he is and how he can single-handedly gain the knowledge of who killed King Laius, even though other people warn him not to. He of course does learn this, but the truth is dangerous in this play. All of that is a pretty shallow analysis. It's kind of the first place you start. It ignores a lot of the more interesting intricacies of the play. 
But a lot of people only know Oedipus through Freud's theory, the Oedipal complex, and because of that you kind of have to start at that base level. It's an unfortunate side effect of Freud naming one of his most popular theories after the play. And I actually don't hate Freud. Well, I do, but not for this. He probably did it for the same reason a lot of people use the ship of Theseus in academic articles, which happened to get in my way of finding actual articles about the myth, but different problem for another time. If you use a mythological illusion in a title or term, that's a quick way to make it interesting. It just happens that in this case, the term outweighed the actual story. And you may be wondering, Caleb, is this actually a problem? And I mean, kinda, yeah. When I was telling a friend about this video, he was like, that's not what the myth is about? I've even had professors tell me that was what the myth was about. Luckily not actually classics professors, but still. But putting all of that aside, why does it matter? It really doesn't, if I'm being honest. But it does mean that some people are going to miss out on a really interesting story. I mean, they probably would miss out on it anyway, because not many people spend their time reading thousand-year-old plays, but I do, so it annoys me. Like I said, it doesn't really matter, but I thought I would get my one mythological thorn in my side into a video at some point this month. So I will see you tomorrow, Veds. May our stories outlive us all.